You can use lines and polylines in Chief Architect to create any number of objects in 3D. This includes things like countertops, terrain elevation data, sidewalks, and molding profiles to name a few. In this video, we'll go over a few examples of how you can use CAD lines and polylines to create custom 3D objects. Some objects can be created using a simple single CAD line. To demonstrate this, in this plan I have a driveway without a path to the front door. I'd like to go ahead and add a path between the driveway and the front door so people won't be walking on my lawn. To do this, I'll click on my CAD line tool and draw a line from the doorway to the front door. The thing to remember when creating a sidewalk path is that the line is the center of the sidewalk and it will extrude out from the line equally on either side. What that means is I want to draw my CAD line like it's the middle of the sidewalk that leads to the front door. Once I've drawn the shape of my sidewalk that I'd like, I'll click on the line and select the Convert Polyline Edit button. This button is on the Edit toolbar at the bottom of the screen and will allow me to take a 2D CAD object and convert it into a 3D object. I'll click on that button and the Convert Polyline dialog box will come up. Notice there are several options to choose from and some of them are grayed out. If the option is grayed out, that means the object I have selected can't be converted into that type of object. In this case, I have a simple CAD polyline selected, which means I can only convert it to other simple line type objects. When I create a closed polyline later in the video, more options will become available. In this case, I want to create a sidewalk. Be aware that in order to convert this to a sidewalk, I'll need to have a terrain perimeter in my plan. Since I already have a terrain perimeter in this plan, I can choose the sidewalk option. Be aware that if the sidewalk option is not available, more than likely that means you don't have a terrain perimeter. In this case, I'll go ahead and choose the sidewalk center line option and click OK. Once I've chosen to convert a CAD line to the new object type, the object specification will come up, in this case the terrain path specification. I'll go ahead and leave these at the defaults for now and click OK. And that has now generated a sidewalk for me. Another type of object you can convert a CAD line to is a distribution path. This tool allows you to pick an object and distribute copies of that object over the length of the line. Now sticking with the path we made earlier, I'll again use my line tool to draw a line on either side of the sidewalk and set it to be one foot from the edge of the sidewalk. Once I've positioned the lines where I want them, I'll select each line and click on the Convert Polyline Edit button and choose the Polyline Distribution Path option. Then I'll click OK. Once I click OK, the Distribution Path Specification window will come up here. I'll choose a path light from the library Then I'll set the minimum and maximum distance to 48 inches. That's going to set each light to be 48 inches apart from each other distributed along the path there. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And we'll see in our example now, we have path lights distributed along our path at 48 inch intervals. All of the previous examples in this video were using simple open polylines or polylines that are not completely closed in. Now you can tell the difference by looking at the behavior of the polyline when it's selected. Now in this example, the polyline on the left is not closed. Notice when I click on it that I just get the edit handles around the edges of the polyline. However, the polyline on the right is closed. Notice when I click on it, the polyline fills in with the selection fill color. When a polyline fills in with the selection fill color, that means it's a closed polyline. If the polyline doesn't fill in, that means it's an open polyline or that the polyline is not closed. Now, when working with closed polylines, more options become available in the convert polyline list. You can convert closed polylines to things like countertops, tray ceilings, terrain perimeters, as well as 3D solids. Converting a closed polyline works the same way as converting a simple polyline. You simply draw the shape, you select it, and then you can click on the convert polyline edit button. In this particular plan, I want to put a tray ceiling that's 30 inches from the edge of the room with a rounded edge by the door. To do this, I'll start by drawing in a CAD rectangle. Then I'll use my temporary dimensions to set each edge to be exactly 30 inches. 
from the walls. Once I've done that, I'll use the break tool on my edit toolbar to put a break in my polyline, and I'll drag this corner down to form an angle. Next, with this edge selected, and you can tell it's my selected edge by the red edit handle that I have there, that red edit handle indicates that this is my selected edge, and any changes I make along an edge are going to affect this edge. In this case, I want to change this edge to be an arc. So I'll come down and click on the Change Line to Arc Edit button. Then I'll use these edit handles to adjust the shape of the arc for it to be what I want it to be. Once I have my polyline looking the way that I want it to look, I'll go ahead and come down to the Convert Polyline Edit button here. And notice because we're using a closed polyline, we now have several different options available. We have these hole and floor and ceiling platform options, countertops. We can also use material regions, revision clouds. We can make this a walkthrough path several options available to us. In this case though, I'm going to choose the tray ceiling option. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And just like in previous things that we've seen before, we now get to see the dialog box for the object that we've converted it to. In this case, we're seeing the tray ceiling specification. I'm going to leave most everything at the default, but I am going to go ahead and check the checkbox for recess into the ceiling. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK and that will now give us our tray ceiling in the plan. Now, both simple CAD polylines and closed polylines can be converted to molding lines. This makes it so you can create unique shapes and runs from moldings throughout your design. In this plan, we'll be using molding polylines to create an accent wall. Now to do this, we're gonna start in a wall elevation looking at the wall we wanna modify. Just like other examples we've used in the past, we're going to go ahead and start by using the rectangular polyline tool to draw out the shapes that we want our moldings to be. So in this case, I'll use the rectangular polyline tool to draw out the shape, and then I'll use my temporary dimensions to get it sized exactly the way that I want it to be sized. Once I have my polylines drawn in looking like the shape that I want them to look like, I'm going to go ahead and convert these using the Convert Polyline tool. The nice thing is, is I can select both of these polylines at the same time and convert them both to the same object type. So if I click on this top polyline, I can hold down the Shift key and click on this bottom polyline here. Then I'll come down to the Convert Polyline button, and in this instance we're going to go ahead and choose a 3D molding polyline. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. Go to the Moldings panel here, and we're going to go ahead and replace the default molding with a different molding here. I'll go ahead and come under my molding profiles here and choose a casing. I'll choose this one here. I'll go ahead and click OK. And I'll go ahead and make sure that the Retain Aspect Ratio checkbox is checked. That will make it so as I adjust the height or the width, it won't skew the molding and make it look out of place. I'll go ahead and change the height here to an inch and a half. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And we can now see our moldings have been applied to the wall. Now, if I want these moldings to be distributed evenly across the entire wall, while I still have them selected, down on the bottom toolbar, I'm going to click on my Multiple Copy tool. Then I'm going to click on the Multiple Copy Interval option. In the window that comes up here, I can choose a primary offset, and in this case, I want it to be 43 and a half inches. That accounts for the 37 and a half inches that is the thickness of the molding polyline that we originally made, plus a six inch offset between each of those CAD polylines that we drew there. So I'll go ahead and click OK, and I'll put my mouse on this move edit handle here, and I will click and drag and create three copies of this molding profile across the entire wall. Now this video has covered a lot of different use cases for taking 2D CAD lines and polylines and turning them into 3D objects. By no means is this an exhaustive list. The examples covered in this video are just scratching the surface of what's possible.